Welcome to TLC for the Soul podcast, where soul meets spirit. You have entered into sacred space. I'm your host, Tammy Lynn Chambers, and I'm here to help you shine. Now let's get going on this podcast journey. Hello, friends. Hello, and welcome to our April Pick a Card podcast episode. I am getting all set up for this. And I am sitting actually on a beach towel. (laughs) And I have some sand in a bottle with some shells that I was gifted. This is sand from the um, New England coastline that I was gifted by a dear soul sister, and um, it's a it's a part of the country where my ancestors on my mom's side resided. So, and it gives me a little part of the beach, the ocean that I love so much in this little <laughs> kind of landlocked space that I'm in right now, and. It's also kind of in line with the theme for the um, energy forecast for this month. Now, this is a timeless reading. You can listen to this whenever you find it. Um, But if you're listening in order of kind of how the podcast drops, then we um, did the energy forecast and we did our first um, story. So we're working with um, the Bringers of the Light again for our monthly story in Bridey Isle, and that's also up to here. And now we come to the pick a card. So I think I mentioned somewhere, I don't remember where, (laughs) um, that I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to be calling in messages for everyone. So typically I find that the um, the messages get very heavily focused on um, relationships and you know twin souls or soulmates or whatever so I want to also bring in messages for um, soul mission and um, soul purpose and you know finances or other things that might be on your mind because not everyone is here to um, experience a romantic partner connection like that may not be why you're coming to this reading although the guides have said before (laughs) they'll tell me when it's when it's specifically that so let's get ourselves set up in sacred space i'm going to try to do a little bit of a shorter intro we're going to have three piles today i'm going to wrap us all in love light and light love If you're a new listener, welcome to the podcast. This is just one of the many offerings that I put out there every month for you on your spiritual journey. I have a rambunctious teenager in the background. He's just kind of part of whatever happens during the reading. It's part of the reading. So if you're a rambunctious teenage boy, um, maybe that's a message for you. I don't know. But just roll with it. We're rolling with it. If you're a returning listener, thank you so much for joining me yet again as we roll through the month of April, um, the quite interesting, deep month of April, headed up to the new moon in Aries this coming Sunday, if you're listening to this um, before then. Wrapping us all in love, light, light, love, in a circle of sacred violet fire. Calling in our guides who would like to join us for this reading. If you're new here, you may just want to listen. You don't have to call in anybody. Um, The guides are here to support me, to support us with messages for all of you. And if you want to take the um, listening experience a step higher, then you'll want to call in your own spirit guides, messengers, totems, power animals, familiars. Um, whoever you might be working with to help provide additional insight and messages up, you know, above and beyond what I might also be sharing. Now, I understand this is a pick a card reading on a podcast. Um, and the other part of this 
um, reason for doing this is to get you to develop your psychic senses other than just visually looking at something and maybe to be more of a relaxing experience where you're just listening to my voice and I'm describing the cards to you. You don't have to see them to get the reading. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what our piles are. I've got three decks of cards. I've got the Mermaid Tarot by Dame Darcy. I've got my own hand-drawn deck, the Labyrinth of Dragonshire. And I've got my own deck um, that I offer out there. This is my own design, um, Happy Cloud. It's out on makeplayingcards.com or on my website. There's quite a few, I don't know if I have four or five decks now. Anyway, and I've got bottle caps. These are my Oracle bottle caps. So we use them for additional messages. They're just um, all types of bottle caps, mainly kombucha ones with messages on the inside, but there's others as well. So what you're choosing from today is three piles. So you're going to take a deep breath. So let's take a deep breath together. Setting the intention to receive messages for everyone listening for your highest and best good. What you most need to know in this now, whether you're finding this in the magical month of April or whether you're finding it at some other time. You'll be choosing by either the number of the pile, like pile one, pile two, or pile three. The marker on the pile is going to be a painted rock. So if you want pile one, then this is a dark blue rock with yellow writing on it that says dig deep. Pile two is a natural colored rock that's painted with the word grow on the front and some little different colored flowers, some pink and yellow flowers. And on the back it says, pray for Lauren. So that doesn't typically come up when I share this rock so or the stone, so there's something significant there for someone. And then the last little rock is um, just a natural rock painted on the front with the scene of like green land, green grass, a tree, like an apple tree, a flower, and a blue sky. Looks like it was painted by a little kid, <laughs> if that means anything. So those are our choices. So pick your pile, dig deep, the blue rock, grow with pray for Lauren, or the outdoor scene painted by probably a little girl. I'm gonna say it's a little girl. All right, so we will go ahead and get started. There are timestamps in the show notes. And we will see you for pile one. All right. So if you picked the dig deep blue rock, then let's go ahead and get your cards. So what does pile one most need to know now? I'm going to get all the cards out and then we'll talk about them. This is the mermaid tarot first. need to know. Okay. I'm going to lay them out. Get some clarifying cards on top. Right. Again, rambunctious teenage boy apparently is part of your pile one <laughs> for you. Yeah. All right, just shuffling the happy cloud deck now. Interesting. Huh. Okay, and then I just want a labyrinth of Dragonshire, and then I'm gonna go through. All right. So, 
got quite a few cards. I'm going to start with the last two that came out, which are from the Labyrinth of Dragonshire deck. We're going to channel in the messages, and then we have some cards underneath that. So the two cards we got from Labyrinth of Dragonshire is Relief is being offered, Do You Accept It, and Everything is Upgrading Within and Around You, Get Ready. So first I would say, when we get the relief is being offered, do you accept it? This is typically, well it is, celestial angelic support. So you'll want to answer that question like, do you accept the relief that's being offered? So they're saying that they're going to be giving you suggestions in this reading. And do you accept that, do you accept those suggestions? Because if you say like, yes, I do, um, and you can do this now or you can do this at the end, um, but they're saying this is the support that's being offered to you based on the situations or the things that are going to come up in the reading. Um, and if you choose to accept the relief that's being offered, then the angels can come in and assist you with these situations. So the first one they want to talk about is, let's see, there's the card is the Page of Wands. It's like a little sailor guy looking up at a, he's got a wand in his hand and he's kind of just like there. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing exactly. And then the, uh, he's just kind of looking up. And then the other card that's with it says, Care, tell someone you love them. So what does this have to do? So they're saying this is you. This has to do with supporting yourself when things may be unclear. They're saying you're basically like holding this staff. In this case, it's not necessarily a wand. It's kind of like a staff, like you started on this spiritual journey and path, but you're feeling like a little lost right now. You don't know what's coming next. You can't see the forest for the trees. And it's really funny because he is, this guy is kind of like in some trees and stuff. Um, looking out through a bunch of leaves and things. It's like you can't see the forest for the trees. You have no idea which way to go, what to do, um, how to move forward on your path because you, you feel like in order to move forward, you have to be able to see the way forward. Like you have to know all the steps. And so Spirit wants you to take a step back and just honor that you even had the courage to start the journey. And with the tell someone you love them, in this case, is a self-care card. So you're just supposed to like, <laughs> they're like, stop and drop. <laughs> stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> stop, drop, and roll is like when you're on fire. Well, they're saying you could be on fire. <laughs> so stop, stop, and drop, and just be patient. Because I think you're getting all fired up about like, okay, well, I started this dang spiritual path. Like, you told me there was this new beginning, and I accepted it. I walked through that portal door. Um, I said I was going to um, take the journey and you haven't told me anything about where I'm going or how I'm going to get there. And so now I am like a little bit pissed off about the fact that I don't know where to, where to go next or what to do. And so let's just like clear that energy out. That's why the violet flyer came in. So I didn't realize that at first, but what, in the intro, we were surrounding ourselves with our usual, my usual, um, light but the violet flame also came in and surrounded us in a ring of violet fire so if you are willing to surrender the to the not knowing and know that that is part of the process then you can release that that kind of anger and upsetness about not knowing and not not seeing the way forward like just release that now into the violet flame you can just say, that, say, you know, angels come take this from me or I release this into the violet flame and see it coming out of you as like a, um, like a dark cloud kind of coming out of you, out of your auric field and just being taken by the violet flame and being disintegrated. All right. So that's the first part. Next. So you surrendered. That's number one. <laughs> the next thing that's being that's coming up is these two cards came out together. So I'm reading them together, and then they got two corresponding cards that came out together. So we've got two tarot cards and two happy cloud cards. And the first card is the six of wands. 
and then the page of pentacles in reverse six of wands is upright and the clarifying cards were for the six of wands was check in your guides are trying to reach you and power you are strong so what they're saying here is you are moving forward it may not feel like you are um, and in this case you're almost being propelled forward kind of by your own volition like your free will choice was to move forward so the guides are saying so get it so get out of the way and let them help you move forward and in order for you to know the steps that you're supposed to take on this path on this journey um, you have to check in more often with the guidance with your guides and the guidance because you're getting guidance but you're not realizing that it's divine guidance you're just thinking it's you know you're you're not noticing it basically so you're so concerned about you can't see the way forward that there needs to be a perception shift of I can see the way forward I am getting the guidance but I have to be in this frame of mind to understand that guidance is being provided to me in order for me to notice it because if I think I'm not getting any guidance then I'm not gonna see any of the guidance that I'm getting it's like this vicious little circle okay it's like this vicious little circle so they're saying you need to the biggest thing here is like the, the, the perception shift stop saying I'm not getting any guidance because that's definitely not helping you and when you do that so if you can say that now if you can make the the paradigm shift to say I'm always divinely guided I'm getting the guidance that I need when I need it and my intention is to be aware and alert to the guidance that I'm getting and it could show up in different ways it could be a video you need to watch that has a message for you that shows up in your YouTube feed um, it could be a book that you know falls over on the shelf and you just like pick it up and put it back because you think it just you know kind of fell down but it's like well no hold on stop going so fast it's a book you're supposed to take a look at and a lot of times with those um, the messages are like just set the attention to get the message you need fan the pages put your finger in and read where you open up to and where you stop and that's the message that you need and you have to trust the messages <laughs> so that's kind of the next thing so you are the, the biggest the, the overarching theme of this reading was relief was being offered do you accept it and hopefully you have the other thing was everything is upgrading within and around you get ready and part of that is you are upgrading and you are starting to see more messages um, more get more insight um, blocks and fog will be lifted if you set the intention to, to be able to see what is meant to be seen you've got to stand in your power too so you've got to know that these messages and these things this guidance you're getting this relief that's being offered is meant for you but if you're guided to do something you have to do it you can't just sit there pondering like is that message really meant for me like that's an odd thing for you to ask me to do um, why would you tell me to like go to the store at 11 p.m. tonight when I always go to the store at you know 6 a.m. in the morning well, that's really odd like why would I do that like don't question the guidance that you're getting you have to trust that you're getting it for a reason so that was just like a one-off example but you know if you're guided to do something it's divine guidance don't question anymore you've upgraded enough you're far enough along now on your spiritual path to understand the difference between ego fear and divine guidance from your guides you know the difference but what it feels like ego talks to you in a fearful anxiety filled way and your guides talk to you in a loving peaceful way and if you're ever not certain check in with your heart and how what does your heart feel when you are given that guidance does it feel good to you well if it does then you better darn well follow it or else you're gonna you're gonna like you're gonna like 
yeah, they're like, you're going to fall off course a little bit, get a little bit high, behind um, because they're laying out a map for you. Your guides are laying out the angels, whoever you work with. I just say guides. And, I mean, we could, I work with all tons of them, but uh, they're giving you answers. They're giving you steps of what you need to do. And if you sit there and they're saying dilly dally on a step, then it kind of gets you off course a little bit. So trust that what you're getting is for you. It is divine guidance. And if they're saying this a second time, if you get the guidance, then you better darn well do it or you're going to get off course. So that's all they want to say about that. The last little set of cards is um, oh, this interesting. The seven of cups in reverse which i read reversals as more of an exclamation mark meaning like there's more there's more emphasis on it than everything else that's in the reading um i don't read reversals like in a, uh, the reverse of what the you know upright meaning is so this one it's interesting that it came out last but it was the significant significator i don't know what that is but the card that's supposed to be the most significant because it was the only no the page of pentacles was reversed too it's and the other thing i'm noticing about this is this card has a mistake on it so it says seven of cup with no s on the end and i've never ever noticed that before so it's like one big cup with all of these choices in it, which is about the seven of cups is having a lot of options. And in this case, it's a mermaid and she's looking at this cloud of all these choices. Um, you know, some cards, the seventh choice is revealed. I've seen it be like a heart. And in, in this case, it's the traditional, like still covered the seventh choice. You can't see what it is. And she's kind of throwing her hands up in the air like, ah, and then the happy cloud card that's with it is safety, time, oh my God, I can't even read it. Time to strengthen those boundaries. So there's two what I would call quote unquote mistakes on these cards. One of them has the word cups is missing an S. The other, this other one, um, I had to actually redo this card when I made it and make like a little second edition of the deck because when they print it out, like the message, I couldn't even read it. It was just really bad, <laughs> really bad. So the last message for you is stop thinking you're going to make a mistake if you choose the choice you can't see. Because it's the one that's hidden that's going to be the best one for you, which goes back to the journey that you're on. This journey right now is there's some things you're not meant to know yet. You're supposed to take a step at a time. You're going to get guidance and then you're supposed to act on it. And then you're going to get the next thing and then you're going to act on it. So just protect yourself around the fact that you don't have all the answers yet and stop letting that get you off course and don't get sidetracked by shiny things. So there could be some shiny things that come along that look like they're supposed to be the path you're supposed to go down. It could be shiny things or shiny people. So some, some people could show up and be, you'd be like, Oh, kind of want to follow that. Um, but that's not the right path. It's like, God, this, oh my God, this goes back to the messages from January. Oh Lord, please. We don't want to go back there again. January was like karmic partners, shiny things showing up to get us off course. So shiny things could show up and be like, hello there again. I'm back. I'm coming back around again, just to double check that you're not interested. Um, Please send this shiny thing off into the distance. Please just tighten your boundaries. Don't let this thing, person, situation pull you off your path. Um, when it says tighten those boundaries, it really is all about um, having a strong willpower, divine willpower to know without a shadow of a doubt that the path that you're on, even though you can't see all the steps forward, is the right path. This is confirmation times 10,000. They're saying that you're on the right path. You just need to keep going. 
You need to trust, drop the doubt, pay attention to the messages, actually act on them when you get them. Don't sit around worrying if they're for you or not because they are. And then when shiny things come along to try to pull you off your path, politely say, no, thank you. Namaste. No, thank you. And keep going on the path that you're on. Wow. So you do really have to dig deep whenever you're hearing this and really stay focused. Um, You will be successful. You will get to your manifestation, whatever that means for you. But you've got to do a little bit of a better job of, um, yeah, staying focused, staying in your power, taking action, and believing in your guides and believing in yourself and believing in source that this is all for your highest and best good. So those are your messages, pile one. I want to thank you for joining me. You may listen to more than one of these, so I might see you in another pile. And if not, I will see you all again soon in the next episode. Take care. Hello, pile two. Hello, my friends. You chose the grow painted rock with the word grow on the front and pray for Lauren on the back. We'll see if that's significant or not. We're going to get you some tarot cards. And this is the mermaid tarot first. I'm going to lay all the cards out and then we'll talk about them. This is the Labyrinth of Dragonshire next on top of the other card. Two cards there and the Happy Cloud deck. Quite a different reading than the first one, which was kind of a progression of four messages. This is like all one big message. I'm going to get you a bottle cap, too. All right. Oops. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. So this is a <laughs> kind of a shorter but very sweet message. So the bottle cap that came out is um, Pearl Beer. And this is my Pearls of Wisdom bottle cap. So whenever I get this one, you're getting um, divine guidance um, for you to move forward on your path. So let's see how this all fits with the Grow Rock. There's only four cards, so I find that interesting. We got the Tower in Reverse, which I read reversals as exclamation points, so like more emphasis on the card rather than reading it as a negative of the upright card. So there's tower like emphasized here, tower moment emphasized. The happy cloud card you got was right, release the need to be right. And they're having me set all these up in a cross um, pattern. So I've got like the grow stone at the top the pearl bottle cap underneath it, the tower in the middle, the release that needs to be right at the bottom. The next card I have is fun is required right now, which is going on the left in the middle like a cross. And then the other card is today is a good day to die, which is kind of like the death card, which is going on the right. So... The message here is you are definitely going through a lot right now. Your guides, the angel spirit is coming in to acknowledge how far you've come, how you've grown, the wisdom that you've achieved on this journey, and the fact that you are a fighter, a fighter who is not going to back down from a challenge. And you're in the middle of a really big challenge right now and you know in your heart the outcome you know what you have to do you know what needs to be done and in this case you know that you're right but you don't have to tell anyone else 
that. You don't have to justify what you're doing. You don't have to say like, I'm doing this and I know I'm doing this and I know it's right for me. I know this is the best thing for me. It feels like a leaving of a situation is what this feels like. Like leaving a relationship is definitely what this is starting to feel like. So this is spiritual growth. You asked for a new beginning. And you even know how to start the new beginning, which is there has to be an ending. In order to have a new beginning, there has to be an ending, which is the tower card and the death card. And the fact that you're right only needs to be something that's significant to you. It doesn't have to be proven to anybody else. There's no need to be like pushing it in someone's face that you were right and they were wrong and you know all that other drama stuff. Like you need to stay out of the drama and just get on with the ending of their the, the partnership, the agreement, the relationship, those are the words that they're putting there. And it can get very heavy at times. Like ending things can be kind of a pain in the behind. Um, depending on what's ending and what has to be done. And I think that's kind of where you're getting caught up is you're really concerned about all the stuff that's going to have to be done to end this partnership, this relationship, this agreement. Like you're really concerned about how all that's going to come about. Um, you, again, are having trouble seeing a way forward. This was kind of the an, an overarching message in group one, is, but theirs was totally different. Um, messages but you're kind of not clear on what you need to do next either you're just kind of like in this waiting game like kind of like it's chaotic right now and I really want my tower moment like I really want all this I really want this ending I just can't figure out how it's gonna happen um, I know I'm right in doing this I know I'm right in ending this relationship this agreement this partnership this soul contract I know it's completely right I don't have to prove that to anybody else I don't have to keep and keep saying it to myself because I've made the decision it's done and for you there's no action to take yet you're just supposed to be at peace with the fact that you're on the right path when it's time to move forward, you will know you'll get pearls of wisdom in the in the form of divine guidance that's going to tell you what you need to do. And you just have to step back a little bit and know that that will come. I know we all, believe me, myself included, don't like to hear the divine timing thing <laughs> all the time. Like when divine timing comes, that's when you'll know. But you have to just make peace with that now. Um, if you need to make peace with that in some certain way, um, do some service work in the meantime. Do something creative, something to get you out of your head. And in this case, I found this little rock and this little person, Lauren, like could use some prayers. <laughs> so pray for your family, your friends, meditate, you know, get outdoors. Definitely have some fun because that came out very strongly um, on the giving side of this cross. So if I look at this cross as if it's a person, the fun is required right now came out on the dominant side of the cross. Um, like it would be like your right hand or whatever. For me, that's my dominant hand saying have fun. So do some service work, have fun doing it. Like, I don't know what you would think would be fun to do service work, but like go volunteer somewhere, help people out or Maybe join a prayer circle and um, maybe start your own prayer circle. Like something to get your mind off of um, what's going on. And the fact that a lot of the action steps for you are, it's not that they're delayed. It's that other things have to happen before your action steps can actually be acted upon. <laughs> so you're just being asked to let go release you're growing as you're as you're waiting because you're becoming stronger you're, you're learning about patience you're learning about perseverance you're learning about being in your power and 
you know, do something fun, even if it's like being creative. Like for me, you know, with the work that I do um, as an author and a podcaster, like this is my stuff. Like I've got a similar situation happening right now. I have no, you know, no idea what steps I'm supposed to be taking because it's not time for me to take any steps yet. Um, so I'm just trying to have fun and keep going with the podcast, keep going with my schedule, keep writing my books, keep talking to y'all, keep, you know, posting on my Instagram, keep hanging out with my community and my, my podcast family, um, keep doing stuff with my, you know, my, my son or whatever, like doing stuff that's fun, but also giving back. Okay. And just allow the time to naturally pass without trying to control the outcome. Because the outcome is already in your favor. Everything has already been decided. You've already decided on the ending and the new beginning. You already know what you're manifesting. It's not a secret. It's not news to you what it is because it's something that you've been wishing and hoping for for quite some time. So your guidance is short and sweet. Just kind of relax, (laughs) get out of your own way, go have some fun. And when it's time, you will be guided on exactly what needs to be done. So I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you're listening to another pile, I will see you over there. And if not, then I will see you again soon in the next podcast episode. Take care. Hello, friends. Welcome to pile three. You chose the painted rock with the little outdoor scene painted by a little kid on it. (laughs) A little tree and a little flower and a sky. So let's get your cards all laid out interested to see what this pile three reading is about pile one was somewhat of a longer reading and pile two was very short and to the point not quite as long oh so okay we've got one card my labyrinth of dragonshire card on here we're gonna get them all laid out and then we'll go ahead and whoa, whoa quite a few there talk through that so three cards from this deck And a happy cloud. Yeah, okay. Group one got this card. And we'll get you a bottle cap. Mm, okay, okay. So let me start with the tarot card. The tarot card is a reversal card for pentacles about finding stability. They're saying in the face of the unknown, finding stability in the face of the unknown. And it's a reverse. So I read reversals as like an exclamation point. So like an emphasis on the message. So it's, yeah, that's really the most important part is this finding stability in the face of the unknown. And the other cards here are going to share with you how you can accomplish that. So the bottle cap you got was um, Polliner Munchen Beer. (laughs) And it's got a monk. So it's like a gold bottle cap with um, blue and red and a profile of a monk on it. Which to me is like the hermit card in the tarot. So we're going to put that down and just see how that all plays into this finding stability in the face of the unknown. You already have a painted rock, which if you've been listening to any, if you've been listening to me long enough or other readers um, who are on a a very high vibe, um, higher frequency ones, then there we're always, spirit is always sharing with you. You should be getting outdoors anyway, but spirit's always like, you need to get outdoors. You need to get the downloads of the codes that you need from Solaris. You need to, um, you know, get out and um, do some earth work and some grid work. So that's the first message coming in is to get outdoors more because you are also getting guidance, but you're indoors too much and you're not able to hear it. So this is what happens to me. I have a a telepathic connection with certain people. And when I'm indoors, the message kind of gets a little scrambled before it gets to my mental body um, by all the stuff that's indoors, like the, the, there's no rays, but you know, like the stuff that's around, like the, you're the one that's going to get the light language. Okay, I have light language. I knew it was coming in for one of these groups, but I didn't know for who. So I've got some light language for you. 
by all the stuff that's indoors, okay? It scrambles the frequency a little bit and I have to really pay attention. So when my person is, is calling me telepathically, sometimes it's a little bit harder for me to hear when I'm inside. And the best place to telepathically connect is outdoors, for me anyway. So you are being guided to get outdoors more. And actually, in this deck, whenever I get the check-in card, this is the next card, check-in, your guides are trying to reach you. It's that your person, yeah, they're saying this is the, the twin ray, twin flame, soulmate, love, love reading <laughs> of the three. The, the others were very general. This one is specific to romantic partnerships, okay? So I just want to be very clear. So if that's not what you were expecting, um, then you might want to listen. Um, there's definitely light language coming up that could be for you um, and messages. It, it, it doesn't have to be telepathically connecting to a romantic partner. Um, very deep soul bonds that are more friendships can also telepathically connect. Um, but typically... It's best to start out like with one person. So it seems like this message is split a little bit. So I'm going to read it both ways. I'm going to read it as for those of you in the twin flame soulmate journey. Um, this is about connecting with your partner, be it that you're in separation, be it that you're in union, being that you might need, not even have met this person yet on the 3D, that you know them in the 5D, but you haven't met them in the 3D. Or you could be um, interested in telepathically connecting with someone like just honing or developing your telepathy skills. Regardless, you have to get away from all the frequencies that are in indoor buildings, especially if you're new to telepathy and get outdoors. Um, so if you're wanting to learn telepathy, then pick a partner, like pick a friend who's also very high vibe and, you know, start playing the telepathy game with them um, and start trying to practice get, getting better at it. The next message. Oh, you got it twice. Oh, my goodness. Yes. The next message is connect with the spirit world. So you got it two times. Check in. Your guides are trying to reach you. And number eight, connect with the spirit world. I hadn't flipped over the messages yet. So that's doubly emphasized. Let me see what the other two cards are. So you have, it's not over till it's over, or is it? Only the heart knows, and all is not as it seems. Illusions surround you, wait. Okay, so what does this have to do with the four of pentacles? So you're being asked to check in twice. You're being asked to get outside more. You're being shown to, to the need to go into hermit mode or something that raises your vibe high so that you can hear the guidance that you're getting. And you can also hear tele telepathy. So they're saying that one is kind of like your guides are giving you guidance, your angels, your guides, whatever, you know, Devic kingdom, whoever you work with, the fairies, whoever it is, they're giving you guidance and your person is trying to reach you telepathically. But you've got to be able to be in a place where there's less um, background noise. All is not as it seems. Illusions surround you. Wait. They're saying there's more that's going to be revealed. And that you're a little bit disheartened because you really want to be with your person, like the one you're telepathically connected to. And But you're in a situation right now, and you may be coming from pile number two, you're in a pile number two. <laughs> I don't know how to sorry. Pile number two. You may be thinking like this situation is just a pile of crap right now. What I see in front of me is not where I want to be. Um, and there's your guides are saying that that is true. It's not where you're destined to be. It's but it's where you're at right now for a reason. You still have some karmic duty they're saying to stick it out a little bit longer karmic duty to the situation you're in or the person you're involved with or something going on in your current reality that is not definitely not where you want it to be but it's where you're at right now and you feel like you're being blocked and your guides are saying you're not being blocked you're being asked to just be calm because your your manifestation is coming, your good is coming, your partner is coming, your especially if you're not in union yet and you're looking to, to reunion with a flame, twin flame or soulmate or you're in separation or something, like all that's coming. Um 
but don't get caught up on what you see in front of you. Like some of you may be like, you have to shift it to gratitude. So you may be like, well, this is not where I want to be right now. And look at this place that I'm in. And that's not where I want to be right now. And look at this city that I'm living in. That's not where I want to be right now. And this, this car that I'm driving, it's not like, it's not, it's nothing like what I envisioned for myself is kind of what you keep hearing yourself saying. And your guides are like, that is absolutely 100% correct. It was your old reality that's falling away now. And your karmic duty is to just stay put until you're given the guidance to move forward. And I have a rambunctious teenage boy in the background. So whatever you hear there, <laughs> it's just part of the reading for you. Um, but you're being asked to wait. Not that you're being blocked. Not that your manifestations aren't coming. They're saying it's just going to take a little bit longer. But you're being asked not to give up. Don't give up. Okay, that's where this last card, it's not over till it's over. Or is it only the heart knows? Don't give up because you will continue to receive as long as you are checking in with your guides, as long as you're telepathically connecting to your person um, and, and growing that bond even stronger over the 5D, you're going to continue to receive like heart light, like feelings in your heart that this is right. This, the, the way you want to go, the manifestation is what you want that that is the right thing. Like you're going to feel it in your heart. Like you could be meditating and you may be shown something that's like a vision of the future and you'll just like get this wave of emotion come over you. But, but it's like good emotion, not bad emotion. So you're being asked to trust that. Trust that that's real. You're being shown those things for a reason. Um, and it's not that your manifestation isn't coming. It's not that it's over. Your heart knows that you're in it to win it. Your heart knows that your, your um, person is coming to you. Your guides and your angels, spirit is trying to show you, yes, that's so. And they're saying you're getting so many messages, even more than you actually realize you're getting because there's so many, you can't even catch them all right now. So you're being asked to trust. You're being asked to trust and have faith and just stick it out a little while longer. Um, you know, if you are ever in doubt, if you start feeling low about it, like you really then that's even more emphasis to go talk to your person um, telepathically. There is a difference between 5D communication, like what that frequency sounds like versus telepathically connecting with someone. Um, if you're if you're very highly sensitive, which most of you are that are going to be hearing this, then you're going to recognize the difference between a 5D um, communication with like a higher self of your um, your person or your guides and how that sounds different than a telepathic communication with someone from their mental body to yours and back and forth. So they're saying trust that too because sometimes I think you think that that's all in your mind like am I is just me talking to myself and it's like the guides are like no one <laughs> they're saying that they wouldn't put you through that, okay? They wouldn't let you continue to believe that you were having a telepathic conversation with your person if you were really just having a conversation with yourself. Your guides would step in and let you know that, that there was something wrong with that, you know? And no one's stopped you yet. No guide has come in. Source hasn't come in. Spirit hasn't come in. You haven't gotten any guidance that says, hey, you, you're just talking to yourself, <laughs> which is really... A limiting pattern and belief that was ingrained for a lot of you from your childhood. So back when you were younger and you were really talking to spirit, you were really talking to an imaginary friend, you were, were really connecting with someone telepathically and you got shut down by an adult who was like, what are you doing? You're just talking to yourself. Like, can you just stop that because that's nonsense or that's, you know, like no good little girl or boy would be talking to themselves. Is there something mentally wrong with you? Like, it just feels like you were shut down. And so now, even though you're delving back into it again, you still have sometimes these lingering doubts like, is this really real? <laughs> Um, and you're being asked to release those now into the violet fire. So we had a violet flame come in and surround us in the intro to this reading. So you're being asked to surrender that now. 
and to believe that all is well. And if you're in doubt, pull in your person telepathically as best you, as much as you can telepathically, because that's building the relationship even more on the 5D. And just talk to them about how you're feeling. And when it's time for them to show up, they're going to show up. And for now, just enjoy the relationship that you have telepathically. Um, enjoy the relationship you have with your guides. Get outdoors. Meditate more. And just know that the balance that you seek, the, the solution, the manifestation, all the things you dreamt about that you're still not seeing yet, they really are coming to you. So just trust as best you can. Have faith. And know that all is going to end up like all your dreams will come true. So the guys are saying that's that for your reading. I want to thank you so much for joining me. And we will see you again soon in the next episode. Take care. Thank you for listening to this podcast. It has been brought to you by the Bringers of the Light, an etheric group of higher light beings focused on service to Gaia, humanity, and the self as it pertains to the spiritual journey. So they are here to support you on your path to love and to working with others. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care.